So callback functions allow us to structure the order in which code is executed. So with callbacks, we can ensure that a certain bit of code executes and completes before another bit of code is run. This is important for asynchronous code because JavaScript doesn't wait for the result of asynchronous code before moving on and executing the rest of our code and it only returns to it once it has executed the rest. So if we require a bit of asynchronous code to complete before some further code is executed, we are in trouble without some sort of asynchronous programming technique. Now there is actually nothing special about callbacks. They are created by structuring ordinary functions. It's kind of a trick, which we will look at now. So to demonstrate, I have three tasks here and they are executed with a time delay and the time delays mean that they finish in the wrong order. So if I try running this code in my browser, you will see that the third task finishes first, the first task second, and the second task third. Now, because I want the second task to run after the first task, I'm going to add a callback to the first function. I do this by adding a callback as a parameter. Um, and there's nothing special about the name callback, but this is what it's named by convention, so I'm sticking with that. And the value of this parameter callback is going to be defined when I call the first task function. So I'm going to pass that in as an argument. And this will be a function. And what I'm passing in is the callback function. Now, inside the first task function, I can call the callback parameter as if it were a function, because it will be a function when I call it. So I edit it like that. And I place this call after the task is complete. So after the first task function is complete. Now, can you guess what the callback function will do? So I'm going to write this now inside first task. So I'm defining the callback parameter here. So I'm passing in an argument, it's function. This is the callback function. And I'm going to call second task. And I can repeat this process, adding a parameter to the second task function, calling the parameter, which will be a function when I call it. And I'm going to place that call when task two is complete. This function will call task three. Now I'm going to comment this out because I have a pre-prepared script uh, callback to where I've done this already. So this is what it looks like. I've added a callback to parameter to each of the functions. I execute it after each task is complete. I'm defining what callback is in the calls. So I'm in each one, I'm calling the next function. So if I save this and run the script now, you will see that these now complete in the correct order. So we get first task, second task, and then third task. Now we're getting an error here, and this is because there is a callback in third task and we're not doing anything uh, with it there. So in fact, we can delete that and it will get rid of the error because we're not calling a fourth task, it is not necessary. So this should now complete with no error. Now you'll notice in the code down here, we are creating some nesting and this can continue for more than three tasks and get really messy also if we add error handling. This is what some people refer to as callback hell or the pyramid of doom. And that's when the code becomes really messy and unmanageable because of the nesting. Now, just before we go on to error handling, there is something important to note about callback functions. The tasks are completed one after the other when we're using callbacks. This is a feature of how callback functions work. Uh, we can do something different with promises such as parallel execution of tasks and this can be more efficient and we're going to be looking at that in the next videos but the important point here is just to note how this works with callbacks so first task is executed and only then does second task start and then third task after that so that's it for basic callbacks in the last part of this video now let's see how we can add error handling so to add error handling inside a task function, uh, I'm going to simulate a process that might produce an error. So console log works every time. 
So before that happens, what I'm going to do is create a random number between 1 and 10. And if the value is 1, we'll say that this represents an error. And if the value is something other than 1, we'll say that this is successful. And this represents a real life scenario where you can't be sure if a task will succeed or fail. So I've already prepared this in the next script. So let's head over there. I'll just uncomment this. So here you can see we are creating a random number between one and 10, and we are saving the result to the random number variable. Now, if the number is one, this represents the task has failed. In the if statement, we want to pass an error in when we call callback. So here I'm creating a new, uh, I'm passing in a new error with the message error executing first task. And if the number is something other than one, that is so the task succeeds, then we want to execute the callback after the task as before, but this time we are going to pass in the value null. So if there's an error, we pass in the error. If there's no error, we pass in null value. So that's the change we need to make to the function. What about the function calls? So if we go down here with these changes to the function, we now have available to us in the callback functions, the value passed into it by each function. So it's either going to be an error or it's going to be null. So we can check for that with an if statement. So if error, so if something is there, then there must have been an error. Now we may want to throw a hard error or log something to the console and continue with the other callbacks. This is up to you and depends on the situation, whether the process should continue in spite of an error. Here I'm just logging the error to the console. Now, if there isn't something there, so for example, if the value is null, then we don't need to do anything, but we might want to log that the task completed successfully to the console like we're doing here, but you could omit the else statement and it would still work without a console log. Okay, so I'm gonna save this now and head over to the browser and see what happens. Uh, so these should be finishing in order, but we have an error, reference error, timeout is not defined on line six. So obviously there was a slight mistake here. So, okay, the S in set timeout was missing. So hopefully this works second time around. And we can see that in our first run, all the tasks completed successfully. Um, but if we run it a few more times, we should eventually come across an error because there's a one in 10 chance every time that an error could occur. And then we'll see our error handling kicking in. So you can see here that the first task did not complete successfully, but because we only logged the information to the console, it still went on to complete the other tasks. And if I run this a few more times, uh, we should see hopefully uh, some more errors. Okay, so this time you can see that the second task did not complete successfully and it logged an error to the console like it did for the first task. So we're executing the tasks in order now with error handling. Now, returning to our code, you can see that even with these three tasks, once we add uh, error handling, it starts to get really messy. And you can see kind of why they call it callback hell. Now in the next video, we're gonna be looking at promises which avoid this nesting problem and also provide more flexibility in how tasks are executed. Not only one at a time is possible, but other options too, such as parallel execution.